Hello everybody. I am going to review the T70M Soviet light tank with crew special edition from MiniArt. Uh, I've never built anything MiniArt before, so we'll see what uh, they're made out of. The deal with them recently was they had to relocate from Crimea to Kiev. Apparently uh, there's some stuff going on there, which we probably all know about, and so they moved their headquarters. And in doing so, they've gotten now a European plastic supplier versus an old Russian one, and the complaint about their older plastic was that it was brittle and I'd never seen it, so I don't really know. Um, so all I can do is review what's in these, which apparently is supposed to be better than it used to be. There have been seven versions of this kit going back to 2006. There was like a standard one, then there was a German captured one, which is probably why I'll probably make this up, because I prefer German stuff. And there was a late one, and one towing a gun, and a captured German one towing a gun, and it's been reboxed quite a bit. I don't know what makes it special edition terribly, but we'll find out. The instruction book is full color, and an actual book, which is nice. Uh, we've got our color callouts in actual color on the first page. And then our sprue map on the second page. So, the beginning seems a bit uh, simple. We've got the tub, we've got one large rear section. No, that's the center actually, that's the whole upper hull. Uh, some spare wheel going on, a little bit of vents. That looks like PE because you gotta bend it. That's yeah, some respectable amount of detail going in here. This is not anything you can just crank together. The size of it makes me think so. There's actually quite not that much plastic in here, but. Uh, the wheel will look like single piece, swing arms, so it's torsion bar. Got a little bit of fiddly stuff up here. Okay, so headlights, drive sprockets, a larger PE piece, and the mufflers going on. Here they're telling us to do tracks, which are Indie Link. Fenders, stowage boxes with quite a bit of photo etch on there. Uh, here's our gun, so that's breech, uh, very similar to a T-34, the, the, it's fully closed. Uh, there's our gun, and then our turret goes together, it's a very, very small little turret. Looks like it's got some kind of double hatch thing where you can have a large piece swing up or just a little cupola hatch. Uh, I'm putting the gun into the turret, and that's all there is. The decals, um, they're made by many of themselves, so since I've never used them, I can't really judge. Um, they look sort of Tamiya quality, maybe. I can't tell. It's, it's hard for me to judge decals until I've made them, and then I tend to make a snap judgment that uh, I've used that companies, and therefore the companies are normally, you know, samey. Um, but these, I can't really tell yet. There's our PE sheet. It is not massive. There's one large PE grill, some small bits here, uh, not a lot to speak of. Thickness seems about what I like. Not too thick like Tamiya, not too thin like Dragons can be a little thin. Okay. So the tracks are like this, um, which is how a lot of tracks like say Bronco and people give you. Um, they are just either, I think they just glue together like magic tracks. There's quite a few, and they're quite, pretty small, maybe a uh, 38T size. There's the detail. Solid but indented guide horns. So there's detail there. They look good to me. Uh, the only connection points are on these three parts, which would be relatively easy to sand by the look of it. This sprue we have two of. It is our wheels. Uh, I, I assume this is like a hatch. Um, some very small bits. This is like the bracket for that larger cupola hatch. Um, these are Russian tow mounts. Everything on there looks pretty crisp, to be honest with you. Uh, if I didn't know better, I'd think that this looked like a dragon sprue, but that's not necessarily gonna behave like one. So. That looks a little thicker than Dragon, maybe. The wheels look pretty good. I mean, the, the, it's very crisp, for sure. These rollers actually look quite nice. That's a very, very um, thin and stiff bit right there. That's very fine. 
Doesn't seem to be damaged at all either. That piece looks good as well. There's a small amount of, I'm not sure what I'm looking at. If I can help, well, no, can't get you any closer than that. It's like a marring in the plastic. I'm not sure if that's damage or what that is. There's our swing arms, back sides of the wheels. These boxes, that's a pretty tight bevel. Not bad. This is the main sprue. There's really only the, the two other small ones and this one and some figures. Uh, mine did come a little wonk uh, right here, but the way the stuff was shipped to me was unboxed due to the uh, amount of stuff and um, that's fine. So big deal. You know, we can get past that. So we've got hull tub, upper hull, fenders, turret. Like, I mean, this is the majority of this tank, right? So. Um, and then there's our exhaust, there's a shovel, I think it's an axe, breech, mantlets, um, you know, 80% of your tank seems to be here. So that looks like the headlights thing, I'm guessing. Looks alright. There's our fenders, the detail certainly is there, I mean it's, that seems decent. It did break in transit, but hey, it made it here from... Ukraine, and I'm okay with that. Uh, let's see what we got. Looks like parts of a jack, maybe? Sorry, but everything I see, I see German parts, because that's what I build the majority of. Now, is that flash? Sure does look like it. Got a little bit of flash right here. And on that cupola right there. Uh, luckily, it's in a decent spot. This one might be a little bit harder to get. Um, but it's not too bad it's on there as well. There's our turret. That looks pretty decent. Little bit of flash around here. Right there. The detail's there though. Okay, so, trying to pick that up in the light. There's a bit of, I'm not sure, like a texture right there, if you can see that in the rear of the turret. Not sure what that's about, and it's, it's on some pieces. Um, here's the lower hull. And if I let it settle, you can sort of see the, the striations. They almost look like stretch marks. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. I don't know. I know that there's those weird things that you get on Tamiya kits where uh, you'll get like a line through here. Because it apparently has something to do with the cooling process of the plastic. So it doesn't seem to affect detail. Get in focus. Um, see? Like it seems there. So that's that's a curiosity. It's also on any of these large surfaces, um, which, like I say, isn't not to necessarily say it doesn't feel any different, but it is noticeable, at least unpainted. Um, and then there's the bottom of the turret. These little pieces look great, like that. That's that's very good. And the detail on that looks very nice as well. That's a... Uh, that's a bit flashy right there. So, you know, some good, some bad. We also have clear parts. That looks like a headlight lens, maybe a couple of periscopes. That stuff looks real good. Again, if you watch my reviews, I find it very hard to review clear parts. Just because they all look the same to me, I guess. They're, Transparent stuff is harder to, because the light refracts through it, it's harder to um, figure out what you're looking at. Figures. Um, 
I just dedicated myself to maybe starting to do some figure stuff. It's not really my forte, but we'll check out levels of detail on faces and hands and fabric. Um, it looks like you get five people in here. So there's a holster and a hand. The hands look a little muddy. Uh, I'm not sure what that guy's hand's doing. I think his hand's a lot muddy. Oh, those boots look pretty good. And I like the fabric. Torsos. That's yeah, pretty convincing. For me, remind, remember, I'm not a figure expert here, so that's a bit flashy, though. Look at that. That's mold seam meets flash right there. Because from the side, it looks flashy, but when you get over here, it is a mold seam. Uh, heads. Now they've got mold seams down their center of their face, or their side of their face, rather. Can't really speak much to um, you know how their faces compare, as I don't really do a whole lot of figures, but it seems like a, a short, small build. Um, pretty simple, very few sprues, a little bit of photo etch on there to, to snazzy it up. You know, plastic, I, I can't really tell until I've worked with it. Um, a Tallery's plastic, for instance, is very, um, the detail is very nice, but it, when I work with it, it like falls apart on me. So I tend to like harder plastics that make me fight them a little. That's why I like Dragon so much. Tamiya is you can look at it wrong and you can over sand it. You can just, you know, it's, it's very you know, delicate, where, but that also makes it very quick and easy to work with, because you can shh, shh, and you're done. But Dragon, I find it that I need to work harder to mess things up, so it sort of works for me. I have to build something before I can judge it. Uh, the amount of flash, um, you know, it's more than Tamiya, more than Dragon, but it's not Revel USA kind of stuff. Um, but that, that interesting marbleization or striation on the main hull parts, I will need to assemble and prime before I can tell you, because even Tamiya's plastic has, has plenty of imperfections if you've looked in their kits, so um, we will revisit this when I build it.